Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning I'm working on the west side of the house where we put in the new brick walkway with the Galloway urn. I really love it over here. I haven't done much uh, since we planted uh, hostas, hookahs, and ferns underneath the big juniper that I'm standing under. I'll show you that in a minute. So I just want to add some lavender today, actually. I'm so excited about having that color and texture over here. And then I might do some planting in that container. We'll see. So looking forward from the direction I'm standing, you can see those are the hostas I put in early, early this year. I can't remember what month, I think it was March, maybe early March. Anyway, they had been forced to come into their prime a little bit early because they were for a show that got canceled. Anyway, we got our hands on them, put them in early. It got super cold and super windy. So the poor things have been tattered pretty bad, but I didn't really want to cut them back because there's such a huge impact over here. And I don't mind. I know that next year they'll do uh, even better. And then we planted the hookah silver gumdrop. I love them. And then the crested surf ferns right there. Let's see them if I get close. But that's pretty much all we've done over here, other than of course, you know, putting in this pathway and planting the boxwoods, breaking a main water line when I planted that one, creating a huge mess. Uh, and then I kind of just thought, I'm done. I'm done with this area for a while. Yeah, but now I know where the water lines are, so we're all good. I also have a hedge of limetta hydrangeas that are struggling hard right now. A lot of my stuff um, has chlorosis really bad this year. I treated them with iron tone early on, which is really a long-term solution. So I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit and um, I'm going to treat them again today as well as move some delphiniums and treat those. Uh, the sprinter boxwood hedge that's right here along the driveway is doing excellent. Um, so I'm really happy about that. It's just slowly coming alive and I'm just loving the transformation. I also love this circle so much. I am so glad I didn't put brick all the way throughout the circle. I think it's good to break up that heavy kind of um, hardscape. The gravel looks softer uh, to me. I really like it. It's just like this little oasis over here and it doesn't um, ruin flow, traffic flow either through this area because there's a three generous three foot walkway all the way around the urn. So, I mean, you walk through, you barely have to kind of like walk around the urn to get to the other side. And honestly, this isn't like a main thoroughfare. If it was somewhere I had to take a big cart all the time, I would have done a different design, of course. But those are things that you just know from your own garden space and how you use it. I knew that this would be perfect here and kind of a, a unique look here. So here's the plan. I've got winter gem boxwoods in the corners and I'm gonna let them grow into just spheres. I'll keep them nice and tight. I did a little a training prune on them this year. They're not super dense yet, but I think that kind of gives you the idea. And I want them to slightly spill over the walkway in the end, but I'll keep them very tightly shorn. Today, I'm gonna plant lavender around the perimeter here to connect the boxwoods, which means I'm gonna need to, I've got delphiniums that actually come up really thick right here. I know it looks very meager at the moment, um, but I'm gonna move these two kind of back into here. Uh, we're dealing with some chlorosis. See that? So we're going to treat those leaves and that way we'll kind of free up some space. I don't want the delphiniums and the lavender competing here and I'll have to do a little trimming on this nine bark as well. And then in terms of what is in this urn right now, I have the bright lights, uh, pink osteospermums, which are full of buds. Um, and very healthy looking foliage. Now, it's been really, really hot. Did I just say foliage? I think I did, oh my gosh. Anyway, looks very healthy, dark green. I know it's gonna be coming back into bloom when the temps cool a little bit. And that's the thing about what I put in this planter. They were all things I could plant really early because they're all annuals that can handle a little bit, well, quite a bit of cold. So I've got the Snowstorm Snow Globe, Snow Globe Bacopa, which is looking really great. The only thing in this urn that's kind of like, uh, at the moment is the Nemesia, which still has some color on it, but it is looking a little bit mangy, <laughs> um, if that's the right word. So I think you could also say ethereal, right? Like very uh, wispy, magical, <laughs> mangy. Anyway, I was contemplating just repotting the whole thing, but I think it would be good possibly just to cut the Nemesia back a little bit and add some more slow release fertilizer and then let it do its thing. And that way we can see how far it'll go into the fall. And that's kind of the whole point of this. I wanted to show something that you could plant really early 
and then really take through the end of the season. And you may have a little bit of a lull in the heat, but you can see like just buds. It's just budded up everywhere. So I know it won't be long. I'm also gonna have to do a little bit of drip irrigation work on this side right here, because there's actually not drip run to those boxwoods. We've been watering those by hand, but there is drip line close by. So I'm gonna bring a drip, new drip line in near the boxwoods, but it's gonna be interesting because I'm gonna have to uh, run individual lines to the boxwoods because they need a lot more water than the lavender does. So anyway, that's gonna be a little, trying to still work out how I'm gonna run that water. Want to keep the lavender happy and dry. Anyway, I'm gonna gather up all of these supplies and then we'll get going here. Got the first side set. Isn't that beautiful? I love the dark green of the boxwood, the silvery leaves of the lavender, and then honestly, once the limettas kind of kick it back into gear, that's gonna be so beautiful. So the limettas grow three to four feet tall and wide, and then we'll have a very tightly shorn boxwood hedge eventually on the other side of those. And then I got to still work on filling up this space. And on this side, it's kind of interesting. Um, we still need to get the brickwork finished. See how we stopped right there? We did this part last year and the guys are supposed to come back, I'm hoping soon, to finish the brick from that all the way to where this boxwood is. And that way we'll have a nice tidy edge. And then we're going to continue the boxwood hedge and I will continue the limettas. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it so much. Don't you love projects like this? Like where things start to look like they're coming together and you're like, oh, there's my vision. Like just one more step in the right direction. Now, before I put the lavender on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and move those two delphiniums quick, trim up the nine bark so that I don't have to mess with that. I also have an extra drip tube I'm gonna take out of this area. So you can see this drip line right here. There's one right behind it. So there was three. There was one in the back, one in the middle, and then this one right here used to run through the flower bed here when it was flower bed. So now I've got way too much drip in here. So what I'm gonna do is take this drip line and then just run it back and connect it to that other one that you can kind of see coming through there and see a little bit of it there. Anyway, I'll connect it there and I'll just cut this one out so that the lavender doesn't have all that extra water. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side and just connect it to itself back to the second one that's running. All right, I got that one reconnected. So that was the drip tubing that ran really close to the brick edging here. Pulled that up. 
I've got it still connected over here. You can see where I cut it there. So that one will connect back to that drip tube. And honestly, I'm gonna have to watch this because this still seems pretty close to where the lavender is gonna be. Might be too much water. So I might have to reconfigure this whole little thing and run it back. You know what, I think I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it now because I don't even wanna have to watch it. So um, I'm going to take off from this one and connect back over this way and just get rid of this little swoop. Dang, I wish I would've thought of that before. There, I feel more comfortable with that because the emitters are kind of perfect. There's one emitter right here that will water the boxwood. The next emitter is right here for the spruce. And then the next ones are back behind. So I won't have to worry about too much water up here. The water system has been handled on this side, pruned up the nine barks, and now I'm gonna place the rest of the lavender. Look at that. I'm doing nine of these lavender on either side because the spread on this variety, this is the Sweet Romance, is 12 to 18 inches. So I wanna make sure it's a really thick, beautiful hedge. Just look at that beautiful color. That's a really good example right now. Oh, I love it so much. And here's the view from the other side. You can tell that this side's gonna get sun first and then this side. It's an interesting area. I think they'll both do equally well because though they're in the shade in the morning, they get the brutal hot afternoon sun and it reflects off the house. So it's, it's a hot area in the afternoon and evening until that red point maple gets really, really big. <laughs> we'll enjoy it. We'll enjoy it while we can. So I've got two different kinds of lavender. That's it on this entire property so far. I have the Sweet Romance, which is what I'm planting more of today, and I have Munstead. And I would really like to amp up the variety and the amount that I have. Lavender is just such an amazing plant. I mean, you guys know, most people love lavender because it looks awesome almost all season long and it provides so much color. It's so good for the pollinators. And that's why I chose it for here. I had considered several different options and then I just thought, no, I really want the perimeter around this brick circle to really look good for as much of the season as possible. Um, and I think the lavender will bring that because even when we have to shear it back midsummer so that it reflushes bloom, it still looks tidy and good. It's not like other perennials that you have to cut all the way back to the ground and that sort of thing because it takes so long for those to re rebound and reflush. So I'll show you the tag real quick, 12 to 18 inches tall, 12 to 18 inch spread, zone five through nine. And honestly, one of the things I love so much about it, not only because it's tidy and smaller, and that's why I kind of want it for this area so it will, it'll stay very compact, but the depth of color of this bloom is unlike any other. Fragrance is awesome and it's awesome dried as well. So now I'm gonna go get Aaron. He said he would come out and dig all the holes for me. Here he comes. <laughs> I have arrived. You have arrived. I grabbed an auger. It looks a little too small and just a regular drill. I don't know if you want your big one or if that's um, okay. You could ream the hole out pretty good with that. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the big drill. I, that one, it feels really strong. Okay, is that the right auger though? Yeah, this will be good. Okay, oh, perfect. perfect. While he's going to get the drill, I just wanted to talk about the chlorosis problem in this area and in my whole garden. So what we've been doing and how, um, like I mentioned before, the iron tone is kind of a long-term solution because it's a slow breakdown and it slowly feeds the plants. So you don't see instant results. You don't put it down and then, you know, two weeks later, see that the leaves are starting to turn green all of a sudden. It's a slower reaction, but it's way, way longer lasting. So if it's something that you can kind of get in the habit of applying to the soil, like we did it earlier this spring, I'm gonna do it again today. I'll probably do it again at the end of the season. By next year, these plants will be looking a heck of a lot better. Uh, we're also gonna be adding now soil acidifier in with our iron tone because we need to bring the pH of our soil down. High alkaline soil binds up nutrients in the soil. So there may be iron avail or iron in there, it's just not available because it's being bound up by our high alkalinity. So we're gonna start attacking our chlorosis problems with a two-prong approach using the iron tone and the soil acidifier on a regular basis. There are um, iron, like you can do foliar applications of iron and that's more of a quick shot and you could certainly do that to help correct the problem a little faster, but it's not as long lasting. Just so you know, here he comes with the drill. When we're all done planting, I'm gonna go through and 
apply the uh, stuff to these limettas and just hope for the best. They are blooming. They look very sweet. I was just going to use the blower when we were all done. But if you wanted to manually sweep it off, you'd just be my guest. I can't believe you thought in a manual way. <laughs> like, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I'm a new man. Yeah, I guess. I'm going to have to bring more mulch over too and touch it up. But if you could do your best not to flip it everywhere, that would be so awesome. No pressure though. Let me look. That is perfect. All the lavenders planted. Doesn't that look pretty? A little harder to see at this point because right now it's at about 1140, 1145, and you can see this side's getting into the sun at the moment. Isn't that crazy, the difference between filming in the sun versus filming in the shade? <laughs> so I think for these boxwoods, I have a water line that runs right by these limettas. I'm just gonna tap in with a quarter inch line, just a solid black poly, and run a one gallon per hour emitter to each one of these boxwoods just to keep it easy. And I'll keep water away from this lavender. The soil is pretty moist, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna keep an eye out, but lavender doesn't need a lot of water. That is just the perfect thing to have here. I love it. Now for this container, all I'm gonna do is shear up the Nemesia and I'm gonna leave everything else alone. So just shearing it up to where the nice leaves start. I think that looks good. Looks good to have it just cleaned up a little bit and that will encourage the Nemesia to flush back with some new growth and blooms in time for late summer through fall. And this osteospermum looks like it's about ready to explode with color. So the last thing that I need to do is apply the iron tone and soil acidifier to my limettas, which I'm just gonna sprinkle it around the base, scratch it in, and I might sneak a couple of colorful annuals in here because I just can't help myself. Walls are going up on the house across the way there. That's where all the extra noise is coming from if you hear it. So I just brought some annuals up here, sunflowers, salvia, meteor shower for a pop of color. And I started to groom up these sunflowers because they've been in the greenhouse for too long. They needed to come out and get planted somewhere. And I noticed when I was grooming them that on most of them, we've got some kind of a boring insect. See that? That's frass right there. It's like um, little sawdusty looking material which means something is boring into these sunflower stems. So I'm gonna cut into the area where that frass is. And you can see right there, I just cut a, I hope you can see that. I just cut one of the worms in half, but I'm gonna cut the stem open. You can see what I got going in there just boring their way in. Let's see if I can get it to move here. It's so gross. So I'm gonna pitch all of the sunflowers. How sad. This is what I found online. I mean, doesn't that look like what it is? Glassy cutworm pupa. The thing is, is that this says the larva mature in the spring and pupate in the soil. 
Adults begin emerging in late June, July, and August, mate and lay eggs on the soil surface near the crowns of grass hosts. Sweet. I don't know. Love for you guys to weigh in on that. Either way, I don't think it's a good thing if it's decimating my plants, so I'm just going to dispose of these. I think that'll look really pretty. Just a lot of blue and purple in this area. And just these few plants will fill this space in. And we probably won't be able to see the base of the house by the end of the season. It is now just after 12 and you can see how much sun is here. It changes fast. And that is it for this morning's project. Super excited to see this area fill in. It's just been a really fun process to watch ever since like early this winter when we started to remove the sidewalk in this area and then this spring when this walkway new walkway went in and the Galloway urn and just all the beautiful things it's starting to feel really uh, really good like my space and I just love it so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one bye